There we are. Well, welcome to Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Steve Van Meter, and I have just a little certificate I'd like to give away today. We did do a foundations class, and this, this is actually from November, but I'd like to honor our students. And Susan Clayton Goldner has her foundation certificate. Thank you. Thank you. So if you want to talk to somebody about classes, ask some of these foundation students of what they learned. It's so cool. It's like the, the ground level, the ground floor of what we teach. And, you know, when you start to learn some of the basics, things start to make sense. Or you have more questions. <laughs> both, both. Well, the theme for this month is self-awareness. It's, it's February. You know what that means. I have been here a year. Yes. One year. And infinity to go. And beyond. And beyond. God knows and God shows. Well, our theme for this month is self-awareness is not enough. It's a good start. Becoming self-aware is a good place to jump off from, but it's not enough. Just to be self-aware is the beginning. And our title today is, What is Religion? What is Religion? And next week will be, What is Spirituality? So stay tuned for more of the same in a whole different realm. So I did a little, I did a little looking online to, to find out more about the religions of the world. And, of course, as a ministerial student, we study the religions of the world, which is fun because you get to go to a bunch of different churches and see how they worship, how they express themselves in different... It's great to just check some stuff out. But there are... The Internet says there are some 4,300 religions of the world. But I would say that there are as many religions as there are people in the world. Because if you ask someone about their own religion, they'll give you a totally different description than someone who's in the same religion. It's very interesting because it's so personal. It is your religion. So the top 20 of the world's religions are... Christianity, 2.1 billion. Islam, 1.3 billion. And coming in third, get this, the non-religious people, the secular, agnostic, and atheists are 1.1 billion. So the unchurched is third on the church list. Right? I love that. I love that because it's, it speaks to the freedom of what we think right? You get to think whatever you want. It's yours. Thank God we live in a place where we can express ourselves without being, you know, well, to a degree, right? But we can think whatever we want, right? We're not trained that you have to think a certain way. You know, that I would invite you to turn off the TV or turn on the NASA. I found the NASA channel where it's just the Earth view and it's just silence and they show the Earth just moving. <laughs> uh, you, you know, whenever anything uh, political comes on my TV, I click it to NASA. Uh. <sighs> okay, number four is Hinduism, 900 million. Number five is Chinese traditional religion, 394 million. Buddhism, 376 million. Primal indigenous, 300 million. African traditional and diaprosic, I'm not pronouncing that right, but it's 100 million. Sikhism, 23 million. And then it just goes down with all these different, different types of um, Jewish, 19 million, 
Um, spiritualism, 15 million. Judaism, 14 million. Baha, 7 million. Jainism, 4.2 million. Shinto, 4 million. Shinto, I believe, is really close to what we... I'm not sure, but there's a, there's a huge... Um, I think it's in China, but there's, there's people that believe what we do, but they call it something totally different. It's new thought in a different, and it's, it's huge over there. Is it Japanese? Yeah. Yeah, and, and don't quote me on these because <laughs> I'm, I'm shooting from the hip here. So Zoroastrianism, 2.6 million, um, and Unitarian Universalist, or 800,000. So those are the top 20. And, and ours is not even on the top 20. <laughs> and, you know, that's okay. That's okay. We don't have to be the top thing. It's about what you believe. And you're here today, so this is your top religion, right? So, from what religious science teaches, page 15, we believe in the concept of oneness. All people are individualized centers of God consciousness and spiritual power, as complete as they know themselves to be. As complete as they know themselves to be. And they know themselves only as they comprehend their relationship to the whole. And from Ernest Holmes, Can We Talk to God? He says, I believe in every religion that exists, for it is an avenue through which people worship God. I believe in my own religion more than that of anyone else's because this is the avenue through which I worship. It's mine. From Ernest Holmes, Living Without Fear, every man's religion is good for him, though it may seem inadequate to others. Religion has ever been an answer to the cry of the soul for something that is real. The cry of the soul for something that's real. Something which may be relied upon. A resting place for which every person intrinsically feels a need. Ah, doesn't that feel good? Doesn't it feel good to be part of the oneness of the universe? That there's not God and us, but there's God as us. You know, if I was to stand up here and say, I'm God, you go, what? But when I say, I am part of the allness and totality of God's expression, you get it. There's not a spot where God is not. And if that is true, then every spot that you're sitting in or will ever be at is exactly where God is. And that's where the power is. From Living the Science of Mind, page 28, religion means our attitude toward God. This attitude is based on our concept of the relationship which exists between God, the universal spirit, and man, the individual spirit. So think about this. Religion is man's reach or human reach. When I say man, I mean all humanity. I don't just mean men. Man's expression, human expression to understand the infinite. And spirituality is the infinite expression trying to know all of us. It's a whole different energetic, isn't it? So, Ernest, had, Ernest Holmes said something very powerful. There is a power for good in the universe, greater than you are, and you can use it. And I would add, and you are it in expression. You are it. This power is equally present in everywhere, in, in everyone and everywhere available to all. You are it in divine form. There are many religions in the world, but there is only one reality, one truth, and it's what you believe. 
See, if it's done unto us as we believe, it's very important to understand what we believe. Looking around, there's so many different perspectives. There's a different perspective in each one of us, as each one of us. So if, if someone was to break into your house, could they convict you of being a religious person? Would they find religious materials on your bookshelf? Would they, would they find, could they, could they prove you in a court of law as being a spiritual person? <laughs> they wouldn't even have to get into my house. <laughs> they just look at my front porch. <laughs> so, yeah. And this isn't a judge. This is just to check in with where you're at. What do you believe? Truly, what do you believe? It's been said that if your religion doesn't move you to move your religion, or if spirituality, your spirituality doesn't move you to move your spirituality into a place that it does. It doesn't mean changing what you believe. It means delving deep into why you believe what you believe. You know, and I, and I had to ask myself when I was in the tr traditional church, why do I believe what is put before me. And when I question that, why am I told to be quiet? Why am I not met with loving arms and, and an explanation? <laughs> why am I told to <laughs> don't come back? <laughs> well, and it is beautiful because that pushed me into believing something that works for me. You know, answering the question with love and that there is a way to find what you believe. And that's what this teaching is all about. So for me, my religion is love. I love at depth because I don't want to look back and go, I wish I would have loved more. I don't want to be laying in a hospital going, you know, I wish I would have told more people that I love them. Now, you know, I tell people, hey, I love you, because I really do. I mean, I might not like what you do, but I love you. My mom said that to me all the time. <laughs> I mean, I like what you do, but I, lo I will always love you, right? <laughs> But that means something to me. Because I don't want to look back and go, I wish I would have told that person that I love them. So, in religion, why is one group trying to dominate another? Great question. Great question. You know, there's this whole war about my belief is better than your belief. And because you don't believe like I do, I must annihilate you. <laughs> now, where is the spiritual principle in that? I'm, I'm, trying, I'm just trying to figure it out, trying, just trying to understand how does that work? Because my understanding is if you don't believe the way I do, I love you anyway. You are perfect, whole, and complete, figuring it out on your own. And maybe you have the answer that I haven't figured out yet. Maybe I have the answer that you haven't figured out yet. But if we can at least come together and say, I honor you. Let's agree to disagree. The world would be a whole different world, wouldn't it? I mean, if you took the religion uh, equation out of it, and that nobody could fight about their religion anymore, wow be a whole different write world. Yeah, write him a letter. <laughs> well, we're in a place where things are changing rapidly. And things that aren't like what we believe are coming up before us to go away. That's why it looks the way it does right now. There's a lot of um, jockeying for position but God doesn't know race, color.
color, gender. God doesn't even know the difference in religions. Think about it. God just knows that everything is all one. Period. End of sentence. Next. When you can look at it from that point of view, religion, it doesn't matter what your religion is. Somebody came to a therapist or a, a counselor and he was a Christian and she was Jewish. And they said, how are we ever going to get along? And the counselor said, are you both willing to grow? Are you both willing to grow in your own way? Maybe it's together. And maybe it's just growing individually and understanding each other. That it's okay to believe whatever you choose to believe. And doing it looking out the same window of love together. It's possible. You don't have to all believe the same thing. That's the beauty of it. And allowing other people to have their... That's your thing. I love you to have that. I love you enough to have your own religion. God, freedom of religion is huge, isn't it? I mean, it's like saying, I don't like the way you are when you say you don't like someone's religion. You know, it's really personal. You know, there's a couple things you don't talk about. You know, politics and religion. You know, right? Well, in this room, we talk about religion. And I'll tell you that God is not political because God is all politics. Right? God doesn't know different politics because God is everything. God's sitting there laughing at the argument going, ah, oh, someday though I'll figure it out. There's only one of us here. So, but I would like to ask, I, I used to believe in some religions that, that would emphasize hell and sin and that that was kind of their um, pushing for me to move in their direction. And I kept feeling like if I didn't believe in that, that um, I was going to go to hell. And that I was sinning because I didn't believe in their idea of what hell was. And I got kind of uncomfortable. And I pretended as long as I could. But it came to a point where I had to look further. Because it just didn't seem like that worked for me. It, it, it didn't work for me. I had to move. So, in our teaching, what do we believe? What is the science of mind? What is religious science? And what, why do we believe? I mean, for me, it was the freedom that really was what I was looking for. That I didn't have to believe, or I could believe anything I wanted to. But there is a, there is a, something that was written by Ernest Holmes called What I Believe. I'd like to read it to you. And it's actually been interpreted to what we believe. Um, the story goes that uh, he, someone came to him and said, so what, what do you believe? And he had never really written down exactly, and he put it in this document, but in a couple hours he came out with this document and it was called What I Believe. And the principle of religious science and philosophy, Ernest Holmes wrote this declaration of principles, also known as What We Believe, uh, for the first issue of the Science of Mind magazine that was published in 1927. What We Believe has been included in every issue of the magazine for the past 90 years. It's, uh, it's been in print for over 90 years. Wow. So it goes like this. What We Believe. We believe in God, the living Spirit, Almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. 
it is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. We believe in the individualization of the Spirit in us, and that all people are individualizations of the One Spirit. We believe in the eternality, the immortality, of and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We believe that heaven is within us. And that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. We believe the ultimate goal of life is to be a complete freedom from all discord of every nature. And that this goal is sure to be attained by all. We believe in the unity of all life. And that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature and that anyone, anyone, may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of the sick and the control of conditions through the power of this mind. We believe in the eternal goodness and the eternal loving kindness and the eternal givingness of life to all. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny. For we understand that the life of all is God. And so it is. So look this up on the internet. Print it out. And read it. Put it somewhere where you might read it a couple times a week. Because it's very... Um, it starts, it's a document that starts to become you. Um, I know for me that sometimes when I don't know where I am in life, and it happens, right? It happens to all of us, even ministers, where we forget where we are. Or... <coughs> Maybe life has become so cumbersome that we are weighed down by the grit and the dirt of the road. And we need to keep ourselves fresh and clean. We need to keep ourselves on the edge of the envelope. And these teachings keep me there. This is why I've adopted Science of Mind as my religion. I truly think it's my spirituality. But it is the religion that I aspire to, to every day learning more about myself through these beliefs. So what do you believe? What do you believe? And there's no judgment. You get to believe whatever you choose to believe. That's the beauty of the freedom of this teaching. We are called an open at the top teaching. Ernest Holmes called it that himself. You get to choose whatever you want it to be. And if it's done unto you as you believe, what do you believe? So in conclusion, Although there appears to be the separation and mistrust among various world religions, I think that a radical renewal of the mind is being required at this time. A move from competitiveness to cooperation, from ego centered to oneness and wholeness centered. My religion is love. 
if it is true that it is done unto us as we believe, let's all be the change we seek in the world. And so it is. Well, it's time for our prayer now. So if you'd like to close your eyes, if that's comfortable for you, or take a soft focus on the candles or the flowers. It's so beautiful. There's glitter on the flowers. It's so cool. So just going inward and following our teaching, let's remember what we believe. So I invite you to bring to the forefront of your consciousness whatever you believe it is for you. That's your business. I know that the power that grows the grass, that puts the leaves on the trees and allows those beautiful flowers to come up through the ground each spring, that is God. I know that the power that heals the sick, that works out all of the bodies of my affairs with love, is that power that creates everything that is. It's difficult for me to sit on a beach and watch the waves crash and think that I am doing that. Because I know I'm not. But it is that power that breathes my body, that beats my heart, digests my food, and allows me to think and reason. So I speak a word of prayer today for anyone anywhere who has asked for prayer. And I know that whatever the desires of your heart are, that there is a way. There is a way. And I know that that way reveals itself in a way that is identifiable, logical, and supports everyone with love. For I know that that power that created everything that is, is constantly creating constantly unfolding itself. And as we step into that power, as we identify ourselves as that power in form, miraculous things come to pass. The healing of the sick, the healing of ideas, and the revealing of truth that send us in new directions that allow us to love at depth. So I anchor that love right here and right now with my word. Thank you, God. Thank you, divine, infinite spirit of all knowingness for this time, this space, and this place. So I place these words directly into the law of mind and release them letting go so that they may do their great work as the law sees fit. And I walk on knowing it is already done as we affirm it together by saying, and so it is. Amen. Thank you.